Hi guys, it's Didi here and if you're finding yourself with eyes wide open at night or you find it hard to fall asleep or you just wake up too often, you may need to get more sleep done. Improving the quality of our sleep is one of the best things we can do for ourselves, for our bodies and it's directly related to longevity, to better performance, to better energy and to better immune system. And still we all know we need more sleep but we find it so difficult to arrange our schedule in a way that promotes a better sleep. And it's not only about the amount of time we spend sleeping, but it's also about the quality of the sleep. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you uh, some tips on how to improve the quality of your sleep. And at the end, I'm going to tackle specifically the issues for uh, the lack of sleep for moms with a little infant. So if you're a mom with a little baby, stay up until the end. We all know what is the general advice for getting more sleep done and this is to exercise at least once a day or just go out for a walk, preferably not before going to bed. The second is to cut on the alcohol. Too many people drink late at night and this disturbs the quality of the sleep. And the third one is of course to create a sort of a bedtime routine or a schedule that we follow regardless whether it's a weekend or a holiday. However, I want to give you five different tips on how you can still help your sleep get better. The first one is supplement with magnesium. You can buy magnesium oil or even take supplements orally. What I do is I buy magnesium oil and I rub it in my feet. Some people rub it in their soft uh, parts of the body, for example, under arms. I find it horrible for me. They say that people who are sleep deprived or who don't sleep that much, they would feel really the itchy feeling of the magnesium much more than people who have enough magnesium in their body. Magnesium is great because it helps the decrease of cortisol, which is the stress hormone that keeps us awake at night and also promotes relaxation of the muscles. You can eat food that is high in magnesium, such as dark green leafy vegetables, nuts, seeds, avocado, bananas, dried fruits as well. The second one is to dim the lights at least a couple of hours before going to bed in the evenings and also not to stare in TV screens, iPads, iPhones or any other electronic devices. The main hormone for our sleep is melatonin. I'm sure you know that and melatonin is produced in, by various tissues in the body, but the main one is the pineal gland in the brain. And the melatonin is triggered by dark environment. For many, many, many thousands and millions of years, that was not a problem for the human beings because we didn't have that much light as we do now. Now we're exposed to light much more over the last hundred years and it's not only the bright light that we install in our homes, but it's also the screens that we are staring all the time, especially in the evening. If you want to have a better quality sleep, you have to forget about looking at these screens two hours before going to bed. Some people even say at least four hours, but I know that this is very, very hard to achieve. The third one, is pressure points, meditation and relaxations. We are all energy and according to the ancient healing practices, we've got meridians or channels or pathways, you can call them in our body. And we have a flow of our energy throughout our body, reaching out all our organs. If we have a certain blockage, this may disturb the free flow of energy and that can disturb our functions of the organs and potentially our sleep. So there are various ways you can use pressure points. I personally go to acupuncture, but if you cannot go to acupuncture, you can do acupressure, acupressure, yeah, which are, you can pressure certain points in your body and achieve similar results. Uh, so one of the points is here. Another point is here on the top of the nose between the eyebrows. And I'm gonna link a video in the comment box below with another video that would show you all pressure points that are good for promoting better sleep. In the same way, use all sorts of relaxations, learn how to meditate. Meditation helps tremendously with sleep in, with sleep in lots of studies. And that's the best gift you can make to ourselves. Next one is have one or two spoons of almond butters just before you go to sleep. Because sometimes we wake up in the morning tired and exhausted, not because we didn't have enough hours of sleep but because our sleep was not of a good quality and sometimes low blood sugar can contribute to that if you have something which is a high fat snack before going to bed you'll make sure that the hunger was not going to send signals to your brain and to arouse it during the night the last one is take care of your thoughts and do a worry list 
So the reason why so many people cannot fall asleep in the evening is that they go to bed, that's me for sure, and then all these thoughts go from my mind. List of things that I need to do, things that I haven't finished, people that I haven't reached out for. So all these things are in my mind. If you get up and write these things down, you are giving a calming message to a brand telling them, okay, now I get it. It's all on paper, I'm gonna take care of it tomorrow, don't bother me anymore. In the same way you can write down your fears, usually fears, they exhibit themselves much more at night because it's dark and it's silent and we are much more fearful. So the other thing you need to make sure you do is to come from a place of gratitude. So before you go to sleep, think about the things you're grateful for. Three things, they can be very simple, but when you're grateful, there is no fear. Now, these tips are all great, but what about you if you're a mom of a baby and your baby wakes you up all the time, what, which is what babies do? Uh, first, when we are moms, we need to accept the reality. The reality is we are not going to have a good quality sleep for at least a couple of years. Many people hope that they'll be able to sleep once their uh, babies start uh, solid food, which unfortunately is not the case for most people. And depending on where you live in the world, sometimes uh, the advice to you would be to do a demand feeding. This is the advice in the UK for sure, which means you just feed your baby whenever you, your baby wants to be fed or uh, you may put them in some sort of schedule. But either way, babies don't really know how to sleep well and the chances are that they wake up most of the time. So mother nature made us in a way we can survive easily through that, although sometimes it seems really challenging. The worst period of time, according to moms, definitely according to me as well, it's between six months and 12 months. When our babies are that age, we are already exhausted. In the beginning, we have all these happiness hormones flowing through our body. We are happy to be up at night and nurse, but our babies, when they're six to 12 months, usually lots of moms go back to work, so they have an additional thing to take care of and their sleep gets really disrupted. My first advice to you is if you're a breastfeeding mom and your baby is already seven, eight, nine months old and you see that your baby wakes up too often at night for a breast milk, what you can do if you do co-sleeping, you can just move yourself out of this room and go and sleep in another room. So it means you leave your baby with daddy. Now, you have to watch my video about co-sleeping. When, whenever you do co-sleeping or bed sharing, you need to make sure it's done in a very, very safely way. You, don't, you shouldn't do that when your baby is little because then it's much more dangerous. Moms who are breastfeeding, they really wake up with ease when their baby is moving, but dads don't have this. So you can leave your baby with daddy either if they're in a separate crib or when your baby is older and you can trust that daddy is going to take good care of him. But this really, really helps. All moms who are breastfeeding find this very helpful, certainly helped us a lot. You can try your husband giving them some water instead of milk so that you can have a more interrupted sleep. Again, no expectations, it may happen, it may not, but just be prepared that you may have to be up for another year or at least another half a year. The second one is take as many naps as you can whenever throughout the day. If you're staying at home with your child, do that. I never did it because I was out all the time. If I have a second child, I'll never do this mistake. I'll just have naps with my child. And if you are not good at taking naps, the, uh, what you can do is to lie down for 20 minutes. No pressure, don't say, oh, I need to have a nap now. Just lie down, eyes closed, and you're going to give your body a rest. And who knows, potentially you can fall asleep. These are called power naps. They're really great if you sleep between 20 and 30 minutes without getting into the deep sleep phase. Because if you get into a deep sleep phase, then when you wake up, you can be groggy and with less energy. Next one is to create a bedtime routine. And if you can, go to bed before 12. And if you can, go to bed with your baby. This is one of the hardest things for new moms because the only time we have for ourselves, the me time, is actually in the evening, late at night, when we put our babies to sleep. And to use this time to catch up on things, to get some things done, to go through social media, which we shouldn't do and that disrupts our sleep even more. So it's a temporary thing, think about it. It's something like a project, project to get a better sleep. I'm gonna do it for six to 12 months in order to improve the quality and then you can go back to your previous routine if you feel like it. The next one is don't take your phone with you in the bedroom. This is very typical for moms who are up at night. I was like that too. That's the time when I actually discovered uh, Facebook because you wake up, you nurse your child and then you cannot fall asleep 
minimum you cannot fall asleep but so you're on the phone and you know looking at screens as i said screen is not good for us in the evenings after probably eight o'clock next one is learn to meditate honestly this is the best gift we can give to ourselves and to our kids and i personally i've been having issues with sleep for many many years and I went to meditation retreat. I was sure I was, I'm not going to be able to sleep there, but they told us, many of you will not be able to sleep at night. If you can't sleep, don't worry, just meditate. And only by giving me this instruction, when I couldn't fall asleep, I would say, okay, now then I have to work, I have to meditate. That made me sleep really, really quickly. So learn how to meditate, even if you cannot sleep, or if you go to work during the day, you can get out and meditate for 10, 15 minutes because that relaxes you and that actually helps you promote a better sleep when you go home at night. Next one is drop your expectations. This is number one challenge for us because we tend to compare our babies with everybody's babies around us. And we tend to think that our babies need to fall a certain uh, pace and we tend to believe that they have to learn how to sleep. So drop your expectations. I, it certainly helped me a lot. Uh, everyone was telling me, oh, don't worry, Mika's gonna learn how to sleep when he's uh, uh, a year old. He was a year old, he didn't learn how to sleep. Then said, oh, don't worry. By the time he's 18 months, he'll learn how to sleep. He didn't learn. So I just said, you know what? He'll learn whenever he learns. And that's it. I'm just gonna accept reality. That's what reality is. Make sure I do everything else to promote better sleep for me. And I just gave up on my expectations. And when I did that, it became so much easier. And the truth is, Mika learned how to sleep when he was about two years and three months old. And now he sleeps really well. So there is a chance, moms, if you have little babies and you feel like, no way, I cannot make it, trust me, you can. It's, now it's really, really easy. And the last one is don't get obsessed with sleep. We tend to say, okay, I didn't sleep well last night. I didn't sleep well, so today I'm, I'm half human. Well, it doesn't really matter that much. It matters a lot in the long term. But if you're a mom with a baby, know that this shall pass too. You'll go back to your normal routine. You have to analyze the reasons why you cannot sleep. Is it because you don't have enough time because you need to rush in the morning for work or because you know you have so many so much work to do at home or is it because you wake up and then you cannot fall asleep if it's you wake up and you cannot fall asleep which was my problem then you may have larger issues with sleep all the five tips that i told you try them and then make sure you eat healthy for moms this is especially very very important to eat healthy foods to make sure you conserve as much energy as possible and create more energy as well and then this show pass too there are a lot of people in the history of time that would survive on very very little sleep a lot of them are creative people such as leonardo da vinci such as nicola tesla and these are people who would sleep really limited hour of time and they were still genius and creative and so on. So I think that with sleep, a lot is based on our belief about sleep. For many years, I believe that sleep is useless, pointless. I don't need much of it. I would rather be awake so I can do stuff. Now I'm changing my mind very slowly, but I still catch myself that I look down at sleep. And since I changed my belief, oh my God, sleep is so important. I really need to sleep six, seven, eight hours. I can see how I get hung on these seven, eight hours. And I'm like, if I don't sleep that much, then my energy is low. It's, you know, BS. Uh, you may sleep five hours, three hours. Don't worry about it. It's a temporary thing. Even if you feel in the morning, I feel crap. You can say to yourself, okay, I'm just gonna boost my energy somehow. I didn't sleep much, but lots of people don't sleep much and they do great things. So that's it from me. And I really hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give me thumbs up, subscribe for my channel, jump on my webpage and subscribe for my newsletter. And I'll see you next Tuesday. I would love to hear from you. What are your experiences with sleep? And if you're a new mom, what are some things that help you? Please share this in the comment box below because then other moms can see it and they can start implementing something from your suggestions. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye, have a good sleep.